Plate Boundary Observatory is a set of instruments that are mostly in the western part of the United States, and a few of them are in Canada as well, and it extends all the way up into Alaska. And these instruments are very, very sensitive and can be used to measure how the Earth is deforming. And from that information, we can learn a lot about uh, the tectonics of North America and something about the earthquake hazards in North America and how volcanoes are behaving for the few targeted systems that we're looking at. The Plate Boundary Observatory is comprised of basically three different types of instruments. The first one is a GPS receiver and antenna combination and that allows you to determine the position uh, of, of that antenna very, very precisely. So within about a centimeter or so every single day. Then we have some very highly specialized instruments called long baseline laser strain meters, which are capable of measuring strain or changes at very, very high precision. And then we also have what are called borehole seismic and strain instruments that are distributed in six clusters in the western U.S. So there are approximately 80 of the borehole instruments, there are six laser strain meters, and there are approximately 1,100 GPS instruments distributed in the Plate Boundary Observatory. The Plate Boundary Observatory is the geodetic component of EarthScope. And our goals are really to define how the various parts of North America are moving. So we can study how volcanoes could be deforming prior to eruption, potentially giving us some information about when they could erupt in the future. We study the motion of the Pacific Plate relative to the North American Plate. And then we're also studying processes where some of the motion between the plate that's offshore Oregon and Washington and Northern California, the Juan de Fuca Plate, is slipping without generating very, very large earthquakes like it has in the past. Now the Plate Boundary Observatory, in addition to doing these things, can do lots of other things. For example, because the GPS system emits their signals in the microwave region, those signals transmit and transit the entire atmosphere between where the satellites are and where the ground stations are. And those signals are affected by the atmosphere, both the ionosphere, which is where there's the charged part of the atmosphere that's at very high elevations, and also by water content in the troposphere, which is what drives our weather and our climate. You can use these signals to get information about how the ionosphere is behaving. You can get information about how water is distributed, at least where the sensors are in the western U.S. And there have been some recent developments where you can also use the signals because they don't all come directly to the antenna, but some of them are reflected off of the ground and the surfaces around uh, where the antenna is. And you can get information like soil moisture, and snow depth that are important in a number of studies about climate and the environment. The Plate Boundary Observatory has been used relatively recently to examine processes like drought in California, for example. And there have been some beautiful new studies that have recently come out. This was not an anticipated design in the Plate Boundary Observatory when it was first envisioned in the early 2000s. The Plate Boundary Observatory is important to a wide variety of stakeholders, not just academic researchers, but now it's becoming important for water resource managers, it's important for the U.S. Geological Survey and their mission to inform the public about hazards, volcano hazards, and NOAA, for example, related to tsunami hazards, all of these different things that have broad societal impact. In addition, uh, the Plate Boundary Observatory has been a great source of data. Just numerous graduate students and even undergraduate students who've used the data in their 
theses, honors theses, PhD theses, and the like. So it's been a great opportunity for the geosciences to provide a big project that was community driven and free and open data access so that a large group of stakeholders could be impacted.